Welcome back as 12 News at 6 continues. I'm Mark Curtis. And I'm Kariba Devine. We have a lot to get to in our next half hour, but we want to begin with a special report from the 12 News I team. The cost of crisis. The pandemic led to more people experiencing homelessness in Maricopa County numbers that continue to rise. Over the past two years, the city of Phoenix has received nearly $100 million in COVID relief money from the federal government to help with homelessness and the housing crisis. But as the I-Team's Erica Stapleton found out, most of that money hasn't been touched. You know, being out here, it's, it's not worth it. If you look throughout Phoenix, you can see the cost of a crisis. I talked to so many kids out here, they asked me, how long have you been out here? I said, I've been out here a long time. Robert J is 46 years old. I said, you see these gray hairs? I didn't get these gray hairs for no reason. I've been out here since I was 15. Dropped out of high school and didn't really care much about nothing else. Got the doing drugs and drinking. A path where he wants help. The only place this is going to get me into is into the graveyard. Home right now is Perry Park, near 32nd Street and Thomas Road. A reality for many simply because there's nowhere else to go. What's the biggest challenge you face at your role? Homelessness is unpredictable. You can't predict your inflow. You can do the best you can with the data you have. Scott Hall is with the City of Phoenix's Homeless Services Division. Over the past four years, reports have soared to Phoenix Cares, a city helpline designed to respond to reports of encampments or those experiencing homelessness. And the top spots are all public places. Number one with the most calls, Burton Bar Library. The downtown encampment, an intersection for the state's largest shelter, coming in at number two. University Park is number three. And Perry Park comes in at number four, with Phoenix's City Hall coming in close behind at number five. We're very crystal clear on the need. The need is great. The cost to fix it, not so clear. With funding funneling from several different sources, including local taxpayers, grants, and federal dollars. But the funds aren't always felt by people who need help. It's a struggle, especially in the summertime. Robert yeah. W. shared he'd been homeless since his landlords decided not to renew his lease during the pandemic. No availability, so then my voucher expired. He's been staying at Perry Park for the past year and says he'll often make the trip to the Human Services Campus to try and get help with housing, but no luck. I should have been housed already. One of the city's biggest funding sources is the federal government, which has given Phoenix nearly $100 million in COVID relief money to address homelessness and affordable housing since 2021. But it turns out the city hasn't spent most of that money. Many of the projects weren't approved until June of this year. Even so, the city has only spent about $9 million, less than 10% of these federal funds. And the money has an expiration date. The funding can only be used through 2024. All this money you try getting for us, where's this money going? Where's it? us off the streets, but there's no beds. There's nothing there. There's nothing there for us to go to. And you think, oh, the city has millions of dollars for this. Why are people still on the streets? It's not as easy as just you have a flat number and that's who you have to solve for because you have a outflow number of people you're able to place and get housed and treatment and shelters connected with family, but you also have an inflow number. In short, more and more people are becoming unsheltered. And despite the millions of dollars budgeted to help, the city can't keep up. If everybody was to put their hand up and say, I want a shelter bed right now, the answer is no. But we do have a functional system where when we do get people who are willing, we can usually find them a shelter bed. The state's largest shelter, Central Arizona Shelter Services, or CAS, is right in the heart of downtown Phoenix. It added more beds in June, bringing the total to 600, which are typically all full. The latest count at the end of August tallied more than 820 people living on the streets outside the shelter, an area that's come to be known as the zone. Phoenix's largest homeless encampment. And in early August, residents and property owners sued the city over conditions in the zone. We're one of the fastest growing cities, and that's a good thing, but there's consequences that come with that. The housing market gets short. Uh, right now, inflation is high. So you know, ultimately, homelessness ends with someone being housed. We're talking with Scott in a new shelter space near 28th Street in Washington. It has 200 beds, and there's even space for pets. But this shelter is perpetually full. Was the city of Phoenix prepared for that influx of people? Prepared is probably a big, ter uh, 
term to use, but they were preparing for it. And we prepare for it by creating a robust uh, rental assistance program. We've been adding shelter capacity over the last several years. We've increased our housing projects and our funding toward homelessness. And some of this is only temporary. This particular shelter, which opened as a joint project with Maricopa County, is only in the budget through December 2024. But that doesn't mean uh, 200 beds are just going to go away like that. We'll evaluate and see how we can fund it, look for other fund sources. In the meantime, Scott says the city is trying to online new shelter options and continue assistance programs. And building housing isn't a quick process, uh, and it's an expensive process. So when you hear these large amounts of money sometimes, it gets consumed up pretty quickly of building shelter projects and housing projects. Long-term projects, when people need help now. When do you think Phoenix will be at a point where there is enough affordable housing for everyone? I can't answer that question. I hope soon. You know, Erica, it would be one thing if there wasn't the money available to address this crisis, but the money is there. Who's responsible? Who's the gatekeeper for all of this money? Well, what we've been told is that this is something that multiple city departments handle, and what we were able to track is only the tip of the iceberg. We only focused on these specific COVID relief funds because that's the only data we were able to receive. So we have asked the city to sit down with us to talk through the rest of their budgets. That's coming from taxpayers, grants, you know, other federal sources, and we're waiting on them to do some follow-ups there. Okay, so what is the city's plan to do with those federal dollars? Do they have a plan? They do have projects that have been approved, and what they've told us is that they're working to, you know, issue contracts so they can online these projects. So it's a slow process, and that can be frustrating, especially when you see very clearly that people need help now. But it's, again, a slow process, yeah, and money isn't always guaranteed each year. They have to look at their budget each year and say, okay, can we keep doing this? What can we do now? What can we do differently? And as Scott said in the piece that the number of people experiencing homelessness is always changing. So it is a difficult job to handle. Yeah. In the meantime, you just feel for those folks. So you do. Much, and, you know. and the neighbors are upset, yeah. understandably so. Yeah. All right, Erica, thank you.